So here in Final Cut Pro 10, we're going to have a look at how we work with video so that we can overlay text over busy backgrounds, essentially to avoid this fighting of the white text with information in the background image. So we're going to be using color adjustments and color tints in order to make this happen. So the first thing we're going to look at here is how we mute the color in the left hand side of the video here. So we're going to use the, the color corrector or the color board in Final Cut Pro 10. And to bring that up, um, the shortcut is Command and 6, or we can come to the color board here and show the color board and that will bring up the color board. Now the one thing we'll look at while we're working with the color board here is the video scopes and this will allow us to kind of see how we're changing the color. So at the moment we have a lot of vibrancy and color in the left hand side of this image and we want to mute that a little bit so that any text that we place over the top of there will stand out so it will jump out from us whether it's white text or black text and we're going to look at how we can do that. Um, so the first thing we'll do is go to view and we're going to bring up our video scopes which is command of seven and you can see here that we have um, two video scopes showing. So we currently have the waveform showing up and then we also have the vector scope showing up. Now I'm gonna change this vector scope to the histogram because it's gonna let us see a little bit more um, what we're kind of doing. So at the moment we have a range of colors from the darker areas of the image, so the black areas of the image, to the lighter areas of the image. And we're kind of popping over 100% there, but we're gonna make basically be concerned about this left-hand side of the image. So you can see there's a lot of light color information in there and some mid-tones. And what we wanna do is kind of push the color for this left-hand side of the image down into this 25 to 50% range. And that means that if we put any white text over the top, then it's really gonna pop out um, for us. So we're gonna come to our color board on the right-hand side here and jump into the exposure tab here. So essentially, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our blacks up and we're gonna pull our whites down so that we squash them into that 25 to 50% area of the image. And what that means is that if we put any text in, which is in the 75% to 100% range here that's going to pop out there's going to be enough contrast for us to see that text which means we can put some white text on there we could put colored text on there as long as it's got that kind of lighter feel to it it's going to pop out nicely for us we can also make another change here which is to adjust the mid-tones here and either pull that range down if we want a slightly darker feel um, or we can pull it up um, if we wanted to place darker text over our image so you can see we're basically moving the left hand side of that image here up and down and between those two ranges. So we've got a nice level of control. So I'm gonna leave it somewhere around here so everything is below 50% in terms of the color. Now what we don't wanna do is mute the whole image. So here we're gonna add in a shape mask. So to do that, we're gonna come up to our color board and hit this left hand gray arrow. And that's gonna take us back to the video inspector here. So if you see something different up here, such as the audio um, or the information for the video you have selected, then you just need to click this little film strip icon here to come back to the video inspector. So in the color correction that we've added, we can see here we can turn it on and we can turn it off so we can kind of see what we've done here. And what we can do now is hover over the top and we can add either a shape mask or color mask. We're gonna use a shape mask because there's a lot of red um, in the face, which means that we won't be able to mask out this brick wall um, as easily with a color mask. So I'm gonna click on the shape mask here and add shape mask. That's gonna add the shape mask and you can see it's restricting the color adjustment that we've added um, into that circle. There's a few different controls here. One is to rotate it, which doesn't really matter at the moment because it's a perfect circle. And we can use these green handles to expand it in one direction um, or another or we can make it a little squarer with this white handle um, towards the top left. Um, we can also change the way this fades out so we can increase the fade from the color adjustment to the main image. So I'm gonna just rotate this a little and stretch this out so that it is only applying to this left-hand side of the image. So you can see I'm stretching out that color adjustment and then just angling it so I'm trying to catch as much of this color adjustment to the left of my face here as we can see it in the image. So if we wanted to add any more adjustments to this then we can use that mask to do that. So if we go to show the corrections here um, we can do things like desaturating um, parts of that image or the whole image. Okay so we can pull a bit more color out of it and that's useful if you're going to add colored text over the top of your image or we can desaturate parts of the the image, so the highlights, the mid-tones, so the darker areas of the image, the mid-tones, and the highlights, okay? So we can pull a bit of color um, out of the overall image. We can also adjust the color as well. So if we wanted to, for instance, 
add a little bit of a different color tint to that image um, on the left hand side we could do that too so perhaps we'd want our text to sit over a little bit more of a yellow background um, or a redder background and then we can do that so we can modify the left hand side I'm going to leave this hovering just a little bit over the yellow and just add a little bit of a different color feel to that almost like a sepia tone now the one thing you'll notice I've waved my hand into the image here so you want to be careful when you're planning out your shoot so that you don't jump into that area which you're masking out in this way so what we can do now um, is start to add some text over the top of that so I'm just going to click away from my shape mask so if I just click back to the color correction you can see here now that we've got a nice left hand side of the image that we can start to add some text so we'll come to the top left here and select some basic type to add to our timeline so we're going to go for some basic types so I'm just going to jump to the titles option here and we're going to do a search for basic and you can see we've got some basic 3D type, we've got some basic lower thirds, uh, but we're just going to go for the basic title type that we can add on here. So I'm going to drag this down to my timeline and you can see at the moment the type is in the middle here. So I'm going to select my type here, align it to the left and then drag it up to the top left. And you can see here that with the effects that we've added to the clip below, um, we're getting a nice contrast between the type in the foreground and the image in the background. So if I turn off my color correction the layer behind you can see that the type is really starting to fight with the lighter parts of that um, brick wall in the background so if i turn on my color correction it's nice and easy to see um, if i turn it off then you can see we can hardly read the type because it's uh, fighting with the lighter parts of that image so turn this back on and we'll just add some more type into our window here so i've got a bit of type there and we'll just select all of this we'll space out the lines a little more increase the size of our our type just a little bit modify our lines unfortunately we don't have a wrapping type in final cut pro 10 and um, so we have to kind of make our own line breaks here um, as we create our type i have done a tutorial before on creating a list if you're interested in how to make a list but you can see here once we have our type on there it's really clear and easy to see um, over the top of the the adjusted layer um, that we have here in the background and we can select this and then drag it into position that we want work a bit more on the the line spacing and how we want the type to look and this is one approach to adding type over the top of an image where if you don't modify the background um, you're going to get this fight between the the lighter type and the darker type and to just illustrate the reverse of this if we highlight the image in the background we'll jump quickly into our color board and we'll just flip the exposure around so rather than bring down the midtones i'm going to bring those up um, so you can see here the image is getting much lighter but that now means that we can jump into the the type tool okay we'll come back up here and then we'll come down to the the face options here and change the the color of the type um, to a darker color here and you can see now we can start to place black type um, over the image by lightening that image in the background um, i use this technique quite a lot to place type over the top of uh, different parts of the video without completely removing all the action in the video behind so it's a really neat method um, of doing that and um, we can also add color tints um, to the image behind as well if we want to so for instance if i come to the image behind i come across to my effects and jump into color just remove my search from down here and I'm going to drag a colorize um, option over here and you can see here um, we're remapping the blacks in that background image to a certain color so we'll just map this to a pink and then we'll map the whites to a yellow so now this image has a nice color tint to it and um, we can close this window um, and then with the colorize option we have this shape mask that we can use as well so we can add the shape mask and then pull that up resize it in exactly the same way so that we get a color tint on the left hand side there but then the natural color um, of the image on the right hand side so this again is a nice method and we can increase or decrease the intensity so we can have a just a slight color tint um, and then obviously we can modify and change the colors as well so using these shape masks with color correction color tints is a really useful way um, of starting to design different parts of your video and video overlays in interesting ways. I hope it's been useful. If you have any questions, then leave a comment below and hit the like button. And I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.